Hi, Charles. Can you tell us about Legends of Valor and on Cardano? Uh, so uh, Legends of Valor, as some of you know, is a piece of intellectual property that I bought. It's a video game that was released back in the early 90s, and uh, it was a very pioneering game for its time. It was an open-world 3D game, one of the first. It's on Amiga, DOS. Uh, it may have been released on other platforms as well. Uh, but basically, it's a very simple game and had a very simple plot line. Uh, so your cousin Sven uh, sends you a letter, says, hey, come to Middle Dwarf. It's a great town, lots of economic opportunity. You arrive, and turns out there's a plague going on at the town at times, so the town is quarantined. Uh, so you can't leave the town. It's a clever plot device to ensure that you stay within the confines of the city. And you find out that the city is kind of dystopian. Uh, the guards are crazy, and they arrest you for random reasons. And... Uh, economy is not doing so well. Uh, so anyway, you try to find your cousin and you go to all the different taverns and your cousin leaves little notes at the taverns and you kind of go from one to the other and each note tells you, uh, you know, some more stuff. And eventually he says you need to join the guilds of the town to make sense of everything. So you join the town guilds. There are four different types. There's a warrior's type, a temple type, a magic type, and a thieves guild. And um, each guild you join, you get a skull, you get four skulls in a book. You can summon a demon. The demon actually tells you that the ki former king of the town has been deposed, and you can go and rescue the former king to bring him back to power to restore balance for the town of Middle Dwarf. The original development team never finished the game. Uh, they ran out of money, so it doesn't have a proper ending. And I enjoyed it, not for the plot, but because it was an open-world 3D game, and there's just nothing like it at the time. It was completely new. Had no class system, no leveling system, very simplistic magic system. However, it did have a pretty sophisticated for its time uh, system of, of health where you could get diseases, you know, you needed to eat and drink and sleep to survive. And if you didn't, you died. So it had a survival mode. And it was very hard to survive in the game and make money in the game. So anyway, I really loved it as a kid. And I tried to win it. And I didn't realize until later in life when I bought uh, the Clue book off eBay one of the first things I bought off eBay, uh, that it actually didn't have an ending uh, above and beyond just finding the king, but there was no finding Sven or any of these things. So I negotiated with uh, the people who owned the IP and I bought it. And uh, what I wanted to do was uh, to first remaster and do a enhanced edition of the game, kind of like what Beamdog did with Baldur's Gate to make the game playable in the 21st century and probably do that in javascript and use babel JS or something like that uh and i would i have to update it a lot like put a journal system in a proper mapping system improve a lot of mechanics uh and then also make the combat system a little better put a leveling system in just basic gameplay mechanics that we've learned and come to love and admire over the last 30 years but keep the original plot skeleton and design of the game in place uh, as a remastered edition to kind of build a fan base. And I'll do that as an open source project. Uh, and it'd be really cool to have some form of a Cardano component using trusted hardware uh, and an NFT play uh, for that. Then what I want to do is remake the game. And I've actually written two games. Uh, one is a sequel to the other. And it's a beautiful plot, I think. And I do that with a AAA uh, budget and uh, team and engine. So Unreal 5 and, you know, really go deep and make it a, a top tier game. And I think it'd be a lot of fun. And, you know, the open source game can just kind of be a feeder to reintroduce people into a classic that inspired the Elder Scrolls. And there, there's a lot more opportunities to do some really cool things, especially if you put some online mechanics and PVP. And, uh, you, and of course, if you have a shared world state, you can use a Cardano backend for certain parts of it. So you can have NFTs and item sales and other things like that, like what Diablo was trying to do with auctions and what happened with WoW Gold and so forth. So uh, we'll get that done. But Crypto Bison is right now our primary gaming priority. And uh, we're making great progress with that. And we're scaling that package up. And hopefully we can get a 2022 release.